Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cleveland Stage Door. My name is Jimmy Davis. It has been a while. I know it's been the holidays. Welcome back. We have a special guest. We have from Miss Stylefire coming to Cleveland, Romelda Taran Benjamin, who is playing Miss Zellner. Yes. Hello. How are I'm you? I'm great. How are you? I am doing great. And I, I have to ask you, with you playing Miss Zellner, are you as posh as Miss Zellner in the show? Or is it like, do you bring your own flavor? I bring my own to flavor to it. I think people will be pleasantly surprised of how much Miss Zellner is in the show. Oh, um, really? I think, you know, in reference to the original, it she wasn't in it as much. So when you come out to see it, you'll be pleasantly surprised. She she has her she is her own world <laughs> in a sense. So in the show, would you say is she still the court liaison or is she yeah. a different character yeah. now? No, she is still the court liaison, most definitely. Got, got mm. it. And um let, let me ask you this with this being such a like is it still like a like a comedy driven show, I would assume, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So, so have you ever broken character because of your like, colleagues? Has has your has your colleagues ever made you break character yet? Well, you know, it's funny that you mention that because when we were in rehearsal, um, a lot like a lot of things, I wasn't very familiar with how the show ran with Rob McClure, and um, it was very it was strange because the first time I had to do scenes with him, I just lost it, like I couldn't keep it together. Um, and then they were like, no, you've got it. You've got to keep together. You're the straight man. Like, you're the straight man. Like everybody is bouncing comedy off of you. And I had never been in that position before. I'm usually always the comedic, uh, you know, remedy to shows. I'm, I was used to doing that. I've never not been like a comedic actress um, or, or a dramatic actress. But the, Mrs. Doubtfire was different in the sense that I was the straight man. Like I had like everything bounced off of me and it was weird because I was just like, oh, like really, if I don't play this this way, then this doesn't work. So, um, you know, there was a couple of times where I almost lost it, but I, like Rob asked me the same question. He's like, don't you ever just lose it? And I'm like, no, because I just start <laughs> thinking of horrible things. I was like, literally, or there was like one time I was like, biting down so hard then like my jaw hurt the next day because I was trying hard enough to laugh because the minute that I laugh it's going to take us out of the world and I don't think that's fair to the audience because they're already like laughing and and having a good time and so I love I'd re much rather hear the audience response than me cracking up on stage so I, I will tell everybody I'm like trying to get me to laugh is very difficult only because I'm just think I'm just like so razor focused because I know that if I laugh, then it's going to break. And once I break, it's very difficult for me to get back on, um, particularly with this cast of characters, because everyone is phenomenal on the show. And so anyone that I'm working off of and, 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 and playing off of is always a treat because sometimes it'll be different every single night. Now, granted, in my dressing room, I am <laughs> laughing up a storm because I'm just listening to the show and it's like oh my god I can't believe he did that because the show is literally different every night this is one of those shows that it, it's one of the only shows I've ever done in my career where it's different it is never the same exact show every single night it's always so different they, so have they made it their mission now to make you crack like by time uh, like you leave the show are they going to try and make you crack at least at least once on stage I think sometimes if Rob gets bored, he'll do something a little more. Like there's a part in the show that he and I have together where there's several parts that we had together. Like I'll notice that he's doing something very different and I'm like, why are you doing that? Cause then I'll get used to something that he does. Um, and then he'll start, he'll switch it up. And I'm just like, okay, don't, don't laugh. Just ignore, don't laugh. Don't <laughs> laugh. And I literally have to repeat, don't laugh, don't laugh. Don't, and like focus on something other than who than him in the scene? Absolutely, and and um. So, for the people who love the movie, like myself, I love the movie. What would you say? Like, is there like was there any like major changes from the movie to the stage show, or is there like any additions to like more story to the movie to the stage show, or anything like that would pop out to us? Um, I think there's a lot of moments in the show where the audience is going to be like, oh, oh, that that was the, 
Oh, but it's a little different than what I remember from the film. Um, I think the writers have done an excellent job in taking the material um, that the taking the original material and turn it into some turning it into something moldable and playable on stage. Because I myself, when it first went to Broadway, I was like, "How are they going to do this? And how are they going to do that?" Right, um, right. Knowing that there's theater magic, uh, but to actually see it come alive on stage is quite, it's it's heart wrenching at some points. Cause I also am a fan of the movie. Um, and even when we were in rehearsal, I, I found myself always watching and it'd be days you're like, oh, Molly, well, you're done for the day. And I'm like, well, I need to watch this cause I might not get a chance to watch it. You know, mm -hmm. um, I think an audience, well, no, I know an audience is gonna come and be, be pleasantly surprised by a lot of stuff. Um, and a lot of things they're expecting they might get, a lot of things they were expect they they weren't expecting they're gonna get. Um, I just think it's a really good time. I think if you're having a bad day, a bad week, or with everything that's going on in the world and you come see our show, you're gonna leave feeling a a lot better than what you walked in the door feeling. Absolutely. And I was gonna ask that was gonna be my follow up, like what how do you take a show, a movie like Miss Southfire and turn it into a musical per se? Like, is it like, like, is there a lot of like new songs? Like, is there like, is there stuff that was turned into songs that like, mm -hmm. it's very interesting. It's a new score. It's nothing yeah. like I think anyone's heard before. Um, it's a little, it's a little pop. It's a little musical theater. It's a little uh, like, it's a mixture of everything. It's a little disco. I just think every, I don't, I don't think it's a show that anyone's expecting, if that makes any sense. Um, That's great. The score is amazing. The score is beautiful. There, there's songs in there where you just want to bawl your eyes out. Um, and there are songs in there where you laugh so hard, you pee your pants. There's songs in there you want to get up and dance in the aisles. Um, so I, it's just a, it's just a, mixture of stuff the right we just had such an amazing creative team uh and so i think they did a fantastic job of giving us something really special to present to people absolutely and and let's talk about your character more so you you play miss elner and you yes. say that you're more involved in the show now yeah and if yes. you're not you're not so like distanced off in the, as in like in the movie so tell me like what what do you think your favorite What's your favorite part or what's your favorite song from your character that you you um, love in the show? Well, we have a group number called Fire, Playing With Fire. And it's where basically we're telling Daniel, get it together. This is not get it together or you're going to lose everything. Um, and that's my favorite one because it's with the ensemble and we're all just coming at him like, get it together. This is not, th this game you're playing is not, you know, um, it's not a smart game. So get it together, basically, in a nutshell. Um, and she is still, I mean, not to give it away, but she is no nonsense and no business. Like, she is about, you know, right. her business. So it, a lot of audience members, which is what I've heard, are like, you are hilarious. And there are some times that I just stand there and it might just be a look that I give Daniel. And audience members have come to me and be like, I was terrified of you, but I also thought it was hilarious. So she's no nonsense, but let's not Absolutely. forget that. She still has a job to do, but I think a lot of audience members, when they get to the end of the show and they see her, they're like, that's the reason why she had to be the way she was. Absolutely. So um, let's talk about your background now. So you were on Broadway for a little bit there with Brooklyn. Yes. Um, how was that? Like that was your, was it your first Broadway show? Yes, it was my Broadway debut out of the clear blue. Um, honestly, I had I'd done the out of town of Brooklyn back in 2003 and it had moved, started to move to Broadway in 2006. And I was involved in the show previously that ended up not going to Broadway. So uh, Brooklyn had to move on. But I um, I was sitting in my house one February <laughs> and I got a call from the casting director because it was playing on Broadway at that point, and I wasn't a part of the original Broadway cast, but I was a part of the original Out of Town cast. And um, he called me and said, hey, I heard you're in town. And I'm like, well, yeah. And he had saw me on the street just randomly a couple of days prior, and he was like, well, how would you like to make your Broadway debut today? And I'm like, 
oh, okay, great. And I didn't really think anything of it. And then uh, the musical director, John McDaniel, called me and was like, oh, hey, so there's going to be a car coming to get you and they're going to take you down to the theater. And I'm like, okay, get to the theater. I'm getting rushed into music, into costumes, into whatever. And I stopped at one point and I'm like, wait, what if somebody explained to me what's happening? Because no one had explained anything to me yet. And it did, had not occurred to me at that point that there wasn't a matinee going on. And it was like, what, 2.30 in the afternoon. And uh, I remember saying to the stage manager, who was my stage manager out of town, and I was like, you know, when is this happening? Like, what is going on? She's like, no, you're going on tonight. And I'm like, you, I'm going on. She's like, we've got a script ready. We, you know, we, we've highlighted all your lines. And I'm, they're like, and luckily I have a great memory because I could remember a lot of the material from years ago. Um, and they were like, no, you have to go on a night with a, with a script in your hand because the actress who was playing the uh, character Paradise, she had gone down with the flu. Her cover had gone down with the flu. So they oh, had to cancel man. that Saturday matinee. But in order for the show not to close, they had to get that Saturday evening show back up. Um, and so I'm, you know, Eden Espinosa, she went out before we, the show started and she made the announcement saying we have a family member that's come back to us and she's going to do the show tonight with her script in her hand and you know it's going to be a very different broadway show some of you are going to see something you've never seen before happen on broadway which had never happened when someone is in on stage with a script in their hand um and i did the show and i made my broadway debut and after she made that announcement like the audience i got a standing ovation before the show began um and then I got a personal letter from Joel Gray. So it was really kind of awesome for me. Like, that's how you made your Broadway debut. And I still was kind of in the clouds. And then I joined the company. Um, but it can happen. It, it's just a note to self that it can happen at any time. And luckily, like I said, the only thing I really needed the script for was the uh, lines. But for as far as the mm -hmm. songs, that all came back to me fairly quickly. But yeah, I made my Broadway debut with a script in my hand from a show I had did three years prior. <laughs> what a great day to remember to pick up the phone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's not it, though. Like, But also, you were also on TV. You were also in Law & Order, yes. right? Yes, how, I did. how was that experience? That was, it was crazy, because I had all, like, it's so funny, my entire, like, as soon as I got to New York and Law & Order came out, I had auditioned for it, and I never booked anything on it, and then my manager uh, called and was like, you booked Law & Order, and I was like, I've auditioned for Law & Order maybe 50, 60 times, and he was like, wow. well, you got it, and he was like, you start filming next week, and I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> so it was, it was awesome, and the director was really awesome, and he gave me a nickname and he's like, bro, I'm just, just, you do this. And like, it was, it was one of the best experiences in my life. That's awesome. Was Olivia as cool as she looks? Every, well, I didn't get to meet any of them because my oh. school didn't include any of them. So uh. they came in right after me. Like I was really hoping I would, but I was still blessed and happy that I got to be on set and I got my own space and costumes. It was just, it was something I had always dreamed about. So. For sure. So let's uh, let's wrap it up. One last question I have for you is mm -hmm. I asked every single person I talked to, and you are number 37 since I've started this. Mm -hmm. What is one piece of advice you give to a new touring actor that is going into becoming a like musical touring person? Like, uh, what's one thing you tell them? What's one piece of advice you would tell you when you first start? Um, geez. plan ahead. Oh, okay. That's new. Plan ahead. Okay. Because I toured years ago and I hadn't toured in a while. Um, quite some time I hadn't toured. And there's so many things that come up while you're on the road. Like the whole thing of like, it, it was a new, like it's, it's, it's like before you just got a per diem and you just figured out where you were going to live at and that was all on you. But with our new contract that was negotiated, um, 
you, with the union, it's it's different. Like you could do buyouts and a lot of things I was very unfamiliar with. So I do wish I would have sat down with a friend of mine and just gone through how it worked because she was on tour with 1776. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wish I would have like sat down with her and got, you know, better an idea of what was going on. But also when I, by the, I, I, we weren't allowed to tell anybody. So we were all, they were all like, no, you can't tell anybody. We're going to make a big announcement. So I couldn't do that. And by the time, you know, the announcement was made, we started rehearsal the same day the announcement was made. And by that point it was a freight train on the run. So I, there was no time between trying to get my life shut down in New York so I could start getting my life together on the road. Um, so I wish, plan ahead, you plan ahead. Like a, a lot of, a couple of cast members who were extremely good at planning, like, oh, when we get to this city, you know, I'm going to do this as far as housing is concerned and I'm gonna pay for this up front and I'm gonna pay for the flight up front. Um, and those were things I just did, I was not accustomed to having to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I would I would say plan ahead. But one of our swings, Joey Stone, he he like sat down when we were rehearsal because he had the time to do it, and he did spreadsheets of every city of what was. I mean, like he is phenomenal. So even like now, I go to him and I'm like, "What about this city? What about this city?" So yeah, I would just so, say plan ahead. <laughs> so that that's a great follow up question with that. Is that so? You guys are responsible for booking like your own hotels and everything when you come to the city. If we decide not to stay in the company provided hotel, yes. So if we decide, okay. you know, I want an Airbnb because a lot of people are like, I want an Airbnb. Like when we're in cities for a week, a lot of people will do Airbnbs. I'm on the fence of like, I'll do the company housing because it's only a week. Um, well, but when we get into like we're in Cleveland for three weeks, uh, a lot of people got Airbnbs. I did, I did company housing myself again. Uh, just because I didn't mind where we were staying because it did have a functioning kitchen. Because that's a lot of it is like to save the money, having the kitchen is a huge, huge help. Um, Absolutely. So I would tell you, plan ahead. That That's like literally the best of it. Plan ahead. <laughs> there you go. And that's the first time I've gotten that one. I've gotten <laughs> a lot of like, rest your voice and don't do so much talking and... uh yeah. And pack light, like pack light is a very is one of the big ones. So, so that's very that's very interesting. So, all right, well to wrap this up, Miss Doubtfire is coming to the Keep Bank Broadway series at Playhouse Square January 9th through the twenty third, twenty twenty four. Tickets are on sale now at PlayhouseSquare.org. Uh, come see the entire cast. Tickets are on sale now. We thank you so much for coming to visit us. Thank you for taking the time. This was a great conversation. And don't forget, I tell everybody that comes, um, you, uh, go visit the Rock Hall. It's right down the street from where you guys are at. Uh, oh, and they have great, they have great, great uh, displays up. Yeah, so the Rock Hall is a, is a big one. You know, the Cleveland uh, Art Museum is another big one here in the town. They, 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 they're real, really well known, really roll down and we hope you enjoy your time here in cleveland thank you so much for taking your time out and we will see you all coming up we have someone next week coming on from mama mia uh which is coming to playoff square and the share show coming to akron uh ej thomas hall so it's very exciting time here in cleveland for musicals uh Ramelda, thank you so much for being on with me and we'll see you next week i'll see I'll see you on the 10th. I'll be there on the 10th and I'll make sure to come say hello if it's not too cold. <laughs> right. If it's not too cold. <laughs> I appreciate Thanks. it. Bam, yeah.